So this is a tutorial on how to use the link removal tool. So this is a link removal tool. Uh, it's got this little pin here. And that's just going to poke out the pins that hold the links in place. This specific tool's also got a height adjustment. So that just helps the pin get adjusted so that it's at the right height to remove the link. Uh, Probably not necessary in most cases, but sometimes it does make it a little bit easier. So the first thing that you're going to do on the metal strap that you've got is to flip it over and see if it's got these arrows. If it's got these arrows, this is going to be a lot easier for you. But if there isn't, it's still, it's still okay. Basically what these arrows mean is it's saying the force that you're putting needs to go to the left. So that means we're going to need to put the pin on this side and push the pin out to the left. If there was no arrows, you're going to need to look at um, the pins itself. So you're going to need to look at the ends here. So you can see these ends here are rounded. So these are all rounded. And then you've got these sides here which kind of look like screws, but they're not screws. And so you're going to want to put the pin through onto the rounded side. So what you're going to do with this tool is you're just going to unwind it. And then aim the pin into one of the holes. I'm not going to bother with the height adjustment because I know it's not really that necessary. Um, it's only on some cases where it is helpful, but it's kind of a waste of time in most cases. So all you're going to do now is just twist this in. And just make sure while you're doing that, making sure that, I don't know if you can see that, that the pin can actually go outside through this hole here. Sometimes you might be you might not have aimed it properly and this black part here might actually be blocking the pin from coming out. If you do that, that's actually just going to bend the pin here. So just making sure that that's going through. So once you twist it enough, you'll start to see that pin there coming out. And so I'm just unwinding it now. So all I need to do now to remove this link is to take the pin out with my fingers. So before I put that down actually, um, you'll notice that there's kind of like a, a bulged bit on the end. That is the side, that goes on the side where the arrow is pointing. So the bulge is uh, on the left because the arrows are pointing left. So to fully remove this link, I'm going to need to take out another pin. So I'm going to do the same thing, aiming the pin into the hole, screwing that in, making sure that that end is lined up to that gap so that the pin can come out. So the pin's out, so I can unwind this, take the pin out, and that's one linked out. So for me, I've got a really small wrist. Uh, my wrist is about third, just under 14 centimeters. So I'm, I know I'm going to actually need to take out a bit more. Um, but for consistency, I'll take out at least one on this side. So this, this strap is actually really good because there's holes on every single link. So every single one is removable. A lot of other straps don't have removable, well, that many removable links. Normally it's only about four. So if you've got a small wrist, this armor bracelet's going to be really good for you. But this, this strap is specific for the Galaxy Watch 4 and 5 only. So push the pin out, unwinding, take the pin out. So 
So ideally what you want to do when you're taking out links is to remove the same amount of links on each side. That way the buckle or this buckle or this clasp, sorry, will stay at the bottom and in the middle of your wrist. If you take off four on one, on one side and then two on the other, then that's going to hang uh, slightly off center and it's, it may be a bit uncomfortable. So that's one off on each side. Um, I'm probably going to need to take off, probably take off another three for the sake of it. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to take off three on each side. This is usually just a bit of trial and error because uh, you don't really know how well something's going to fit until you do it. So now I'm just going to try and fit them back in. With this bracelet, it's probably a good idea to at least keep one arrow or one of the links with the arrow. That way you don't need to remember which way the pins go back in. Because if you forget, then sometimes the links can get stuck or the pins can get stuck. So in this case, arrow is facing down that way. So I want the bulge of this pin to face that same direction. So there's two ways to get this flush. Um, there's, you can get the link tool to, and push it back in. Um, when you're pushing it back in, it's probably a good idea to use this. That way you can aim it properly. Otherwise it can get a bit hard to aim properly without the, the height adjustment. The other way to do it is to just use a surface and that's probably the easiest way and fastest. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get it all the way flush. Um, so you might need to use a ledge. So I'm just gonna push it off the camera, off the edge of the table. And you can see that is almost flush. It's slightly out of it. So this is when I can just use a tool to finish the job. So the height I've adjusted a bit too much. It's gonna bring it down a bit. And now I've done it too much. I'm gonna bring the height up. Okay, so now I pushed it back in and you can see now it's flush. So now back on the other side, arrow is pointing up. So the bulge of the pin is gonna go on the top. So now I'm just gonna use the ledge of the table to push it back in or to do most of the job. And now I'm just gonna use a tool to push the rest back in. So there's no need to go crazy and push it all the way in. Because what can happen sometimes is you might wear down the holes of that link and um, it may not hold um, the pin anymore. I'm just going to push it back in a bit more because I didn't do it enough. Okay, so now that's flush as well. So now hopefully this will fit my wrist. I think that will. So now I'm going to put this back on the watch. This strap has double-sided quick-release spring bars to make it easy. And for the Galaxy Watch 5, we're going to put the strap through the back of the watch. I'm just going to give it a nice tug, make sure it's secure. So a better idea for me just then would have been to open the clasp up. That way I've got extra space to play with. So there you go. So that's how this strap looks on my wrist. 
probably doesn't look as good as it should because this is actually really tight on my wrist. Uh, I probably took out one extra link too much. And you can see because it's so tight, it's kind of pulling down on these end links and creating that kind of flared effect when it should really be something more like that. But at least you can see how it looks.